This one is going to be our backlight to put some light through the semi-transparent bottle. Obviously sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. But its other function is also to illuminate the bubbles that we're going to have later. So even if we don't need to put light through the subject, we do need a backlight to light the bubbles. And as always, because it's pointing almost directly at the camera, flare is going to be a real problem if we don't do something about it. So again, I'm putting a 10 degree honeycomb on the light to make sure that we don't get flare. Well, that's the lighting on the subject very roughly sorted out. What I need to do now is to tweak it. I've put an orange gel on the honeycombed light directly above the subject. It, the effect is subtle, but I think it's worthwhile. You can't see it because I've actually put it inside the honeycomb, which keeps it, of course, in place quite nicely. A few changes. I've taken away the beauty dish and I've put this high intensity reflector instead. Again, fitted with a honeycomb. That's because I was catching the background with a beauty dish and I didn't want to do that. Also, behind the shooting table, I put yet another light and that one is again fitted with honeycomb. It's also fitted with a blue gel. Now I think we're pretty well there with the basic lighting. Of course, what it lacks is the dynamic look that we get or that we can get with this kind of shot. So we have one small but very important change to make. And here's our final shot. Now from the spirit, I know we're going to have to take quite a few shots to get it right. Let the bubbles clear, start again. So there you go, it's quite a complicated, painstaking way of doing it. I don't know how you feel about it, but I think you get better results and much more predictable results than the other method, which is simply to drop the item into the water and hope for the best. Of course, the classic product for this kind of shot is probably your old friend, the can of Coke. Basically the same lighting. Now it has a red gel on it. That's to put a little tinge of red on the product base, which is here the dividing line between the water and the air, a reflective surface. It's subtle, but I'm trying to pick up the red that's in the Coca-Cola logo. And also I've taken away our white background and I've put a black background there. Grey would do perfectly well, but if you have enough lighting power, and I have, then I prefer black because it gives me slightly more control. And whereas before we had a blue gel shining through the background, we've now got a red gel. Again, not too obvious, but we've got a red gel on the black. And of course that's coming from the front and the side. And again, that has a honeycomb. Anyway, let's take a shot and see what we've got. Well, what else can we photograph with this type of arrangement? Anything really that's cool. Of course, I'm far too old to know what's cool and what isn't, but I happen to think that my portrait photography video is quite a cool product. So let's have a go at that. We don't need the red gel on the background for this shot. So that's been taken away. Also, it has to be arranged at an angle where the light that striking it from the frontal or more or less the front position isn't going to cause any problems with unwanted reflections or specular highlights. Apart from that, it's pretty straightforward. I'm not even sure that we need the water splash either, but we can give it a go, see what happens. As with everything else in photography, a lot of experimentation is the key really to success because you don't really know what works all the time until you've tried it. Anyway, we can try a splash of water, see what happens. <laughs> 